welcome the dwelling of the dark. We are a channel honoring the yellowed and blackened bones of many prominent authors. We will be digging up several obscure, strange, and forgotten authors who influenced many of the great horror, science fiction, and fantasy writers to date. More tales of the horrifying, obscure, strange, and forgotten are climbing out of the tombs. Check out our links below for more information. Subscribe, comment, like, donate, or I'll send the devil of Black Bayou to rip your head off as we did the like button. Send us ghoulish delights for the Skull and Bones collection. Your pound of writer's flesh will feed our ghouls. For now, children of horror, legion of ghouls. Tonight, we are dedicating the prologue to our latest novel, Hell's Forge, to the ravenous rabid rat, Thomas Swafford, the creeper in the crypt, ARW, CWB, the bloody beast from the hills, Tom Curry, the lurker amongst the tombs, Stephen Hoy, the lumbering eternal monstrosity, Lewis Thompson, the chilling and killing, Annabelle Lynn, the crusher of skulls, Connie Russell, that hellbound rider of souls, Alex Davies, the shambler of darkest depths, Sherry Curry, to the crawling corpse, Cole Marie, the real macabre Morticia, Muscle White, the dust deviled still in Kansas, the roaring mechanical beast, Little Turbo 400, the gelatinous one strange brain and the horrific caged creature many of you know his music Mephistopheles supreme minion Mr. Forge thank you for your continued support and the epic comments devilishly devoted to horror may your souls always be tonight we bring you the prologue to the most terrifying haunted house horror novel ever written, Hell's Forge. The full novel will be released soon. Enjoy. Hell's Forge by Jeffrey LeBlanc. First written July 4th, 2022. Prologue. That is, Forge was dared into the Devil's Cavern to prove that he didn't exist. He came back without his soul. Pearl Ridge Legend The grandeur of the Emerald Hemlocks and towering eastern pines of Cauldron Mountain stood ageless and eternal, shadowing Lake Lanier, but ominous and unnerving were the darker, malevolent mist spreading across its jagged black crags. Ancient were those rolling and twisting fogs advancing out of the recesses of Devil's Cavern. Ever looming and ever encroaching, they flowed, covering an overgrown acreage that housed an abandoned relic. This crumbling structure of granite, colored glass, and oak had once been Forge Mansion. Long were the mansion's mysteries, horrendous were its horrors, and vague were the details of the missing and presumed dead across the mansion ground for the past and the forgetful dead had now hidden much of the sinister and fogged the memory of the evil that had scorched the manor with a more devious name, Hell's Forge. Forge Mansion, former home to the long missing musician and actor Thaddeus Forge, a presumed dead man He'd be over 100 by now, 
if he was alive. An artist whom many believed sold his soul so long ago in Devil's Cavern. The poor sold his victim to a prank gone awry. The recipient of the cruelest joke between heaven and hell that brought no laughter, but by all accounts, a vengeful deliverer of a biblical curse that has brought so many in my town to their knees. The people of Appalachia may shiver and shudder when they tell you the thunder roared as a lost child scream on the day that his forge disappeared in Devil's Cavern. Remembering and recalling in regret, the older folks will be obliged to spout the Pearl Ridge legend that his forge was dared into the Devil's Cavern to prove that he didn't exist. He came back without his soul. How contrite and saddened they may appear rambling about how that poor boy suffered long before his tragic disappearance. Whether it was the beatings by the town bully, Tommy Eastling, or the slings and slights of humiliation by the town folk, the boy came to be pitied by some as an outcast. What tremendous attacks and shocking abuse that had endured over the years by that gang of bullies. Swollen black eyes, bleeding split lips, and crushed or broken bones. Then, in the cruelest trick of all by Tommy Eastling, he was dared to plunge into that hellish abyss and subjugated to God only knows that accursed cavern. My imagination goes so luridly dark trying to conjure what his experience must have been in Devil's Cavern. What did that hideous shadow devise? If it was the devil, as they say, what did he do to break Thaddeus's will and snatch his soul? Truly, though, all would agree that whatever happened in Devil's Cavern had to be hell on earth. What a fool! Thad was. A foolish child agreeing to Tommy Eastland's dare and venturing into Devil's Cavern. How he screamed. I had nightmares about it for years. Tommy would attest. Later, as Tommy and his closest friend Daniel Duncan aged and drank more, they'd both recall clawed hands, it was scaled, clawed talons, they grabbed Thad and snatched him down below. I try to imagine now the screams and the dragon of Thad down those illimitable cave tunnels. I hear the thud of his skull and crack of his ribs on the rocks being dragged into the eternal night of the cavern's maze. I see him catching some glimpse of his attacker by some miraculous form of light either by a shard of sunlight phosphorescence or flashlight I see he recognizes the monstrosity pulling him to his doom locals will swear as the boy was taken the Appalachian Mountains themselves caught fire if you continue to doggedly inquire the oldest soothsayers, Judith Crabtree for instance, may stare you down in disbelief. If you may put a twisted finger to hush your blasphemous lips as they scold. Satan himself took Thaddeus Forge in the Devil's Cavern. That's all you need to know. Hurry to get away from your inquiries. Townsfolk may cast the evil eye upon you and look up to heaven itself whispering leave it alone leave us alone the boy cursed all of us for what tommy eastland dared him to do he cursed every man 
woman and child for them boys and all of us leaving him in the darkness with that thing. On that horrific day, our town became cursed. The rains fell as fire or as blood, take your pick, searing into our damned flesh, the mark of Cain. What will be said as you tread through all the gossip and local superstition is something went horribly wrong on the day Thaddeus Forge was dared to go into Devil's Cavern. Whether the clouds blasted arcs of ruby red or blinding orange on the day Thaddeus descended into hell itself, I wouldn't know. Or the Appalachian Mountains really on fire that terrifying day too. Maybe they were, or possibly it was all easily explainable. Did it really rain crimson? Maybe blood, maybe fire, on the town of Pearl Ridge as Thaddeus stumbled in the dark of that cave searching for the impossible? I was not there and wouldn't know. Besides, only Thaddeus could tell you what really happened that day as he screeched and pleaded and screamed for mercy. Only Thaddeus could tell you what attacked him. Only he witnessed what dragged him into that cavern labyrinth filled with fetid rock, chilling fog and creatures of the night. Most assuredly these days, you wouldn't want to meet that is Forge either alone in the dark. What I heard was passed down from father to son over the last 50 years by roaring campfire flames up on Chestnut Mountain, sipping blistering fire water from a jar passed between the mountain folk. You'd get a tale to give you the shivers a ghost story guaranteed to keep the children in bed at night. That's what we thought of Thaddeus Forge. He was the boogeyman for us country folk. The creature who made your spine tingle as you walked on a lonely forest road. A monster who kept you aware as your knees ached and you wanted to rest that maybe it wasn't such a good idea to stop. Possibly with clawed hands or worse, Thaddeus Forge waited for you in the darkness behind the trees. You know the tree I'm talking about. It's the gnarled one that doesn't look quite right or sways a little too much. Thank you for listening. Have a great night.